G'day everybody and welcome to All Wrapped Up. Um, we're going to look at the review of the second game from Friday night between the West Tigers and Jermaine Asako, I mean the Brisbane Broncos, um, out at Campbelltown. Um, Scoreline ended up being 9-7. Uh, bit of controversy coming out of, out of the game um, with relation to the officials claiming now that the on-field referee uh, got the decision wrong. Uh, doesn't say or do much for, for Tigers fans and the Tigers themselves, but um, I think that's disappointing that uh, they end up getting beaten by a penalty goal in extra time um, through the wrong decision. It's, uh, it's, it's very cruel. Uh, in saying that, what a cracker of a game. And although when you look at it, the when you look at the game itself, uh, I had the chance to obviously watch it again, um, but it was one of those games that was like a real arm wrestle for, for the entirety of the match, and uh, it, it was a testament to both teams because they were both out on their feet, um, you know, final whistle at the 90-minute mark, but uh, they were both very noticeably out on their feet. Um, both forward packs really aimed up against one another. Um, if you if you look at them without being biased, um, you know, the, the Tigers really commendable performance, but um, the Broncos on the night sort of you could say got the better of them when it, when you compare uh, post contact meters and you know meters gained. Uh, on the night, and, and it was noticeable too that the sets of six, um, when the Broncos rolled through the Tigers, um, they were making more uh, inroads. So, you know, winning field position through their sets of six, through their forwards, was quite noticeable. Um, the difference, obviously, was that the Tigers um, defended really well or scrambled really well um, in a lot of areas, got bodies into, uh, into tackles. Um, which really helped them um, from a scrambling point of view, like I mentioned. Um, looking at positives for the Broncos, um, I think Andrew McCulloch hasn't really been given the credit uh, he deserves uh, since he came back in round two. Um, his performance on Friday night was outstanding. Uh, Attacking himself to almost a standstill at one stop, one time, he, he couldn't even get back into the line. He was just knackered. Um, he made over f nearly fifty tackles, probably a bit under, or maybe more. When you look at NRL stats and you look at Fox stats, there's a major discrepancy, and you can't get it right. So, you know, he he made around probably forty-seven to forty-eight tackles on the night, but his overall performance of leading the team around the park was. Uh, it's exceptional. Uh, like I said, he doesn't get the credit that he that he really deserves. He's one of the better hookers in the competition, by far. Um, uh, one of the other before the, the Broncos forwards all went really well. Um, you know, even when uh, Big Joe off and Gowie and Corbin Sims come on, um, they both had really good games. Um, but you know, overall the the forward pack. Um, Front rowers, locks. You know, Josh McGuire had a really good game. Um, but I thought Alex Glenn's game sort of s stood out. Um, he was really solid in both defence. Some of his, his carries were really, really good. Um, uh, of the backs, um, uh, Jermaine Asako, probably, if, if you take away the fact that he's goal kicking and kicking them to a win, um, probably one of the better performances from the backs. Um, again, this week, I thought Jimmy the Jet was quite quiet. I think he just needs to come in and look for the ball more, just do a little bit of work. You know, he, his carries coming out of the, his own half were pretty good, but I don't know, I'd, I'd, I'd personally like to see him put his hand up a little bit more and come in and do a little bit more grunt work. Um, overall performance of the Broncos was, you know, was pretty sound. I, I have, 
have no doubt that you know from a, a standard that they set they they would have really been disappointed with their performance from Friday night which is understandable um, but in saying that they they were only really given what they what they got because the Tigers really you know really aimed up and uh, really scrapped with them on the on the night so um, a negative point of view. I still can't get my head around Darius Boy getting caught in the line. Um, you know, close to the line, 20 metres out, but in particular, you know, between 10 and try line, he's, you know, he's in the defensive line. And in the, in the first three weeks, it's been noticeable. And he's, he's got caught out on a couple of occasions, but there's only been, I think, two of those occasions that have been converted into points. So... Don't know why they're doing it. If it's a ploy or you know, part of their, their, their tactic, have another body in the line. But you know, but there's no one at the back. So you know some of the JT played against him last week and found him out. Um, and there's going to be some better halves in the in, in the coming weeks if they if they keep running with that style of defence. Um, some of the more I guess depth. Kickers that have a softer touch, you now we'll find him out, and um, yeah, that's a concern for me. Um, the other concern is that, and more than likely they'll turn this around. So, what I'm about to say probably means nothing uh, in the context of it. But you now they got turned away on the night, and the fact that they only won the game um, through uh, Joe May and Asako's boot uh, is a concern. Um, Tigers didn't give them a lot. They, like I mentioned, they scrambled really well. But you're gonna have to look at the halves on the night. Cody Nikarima didn't run the ball. I think he had one run. Um, Anthony Milford run up to between eight and ten runs. Like I said, you can't get the stats right between NRL and Fox Sports. Uh, but you know it's. It's a little bit of a concern that, that, that they couldn't score points on the night and they, they did throw a bit, but a lot of their execution let them down, drop ball and, and whatnot. But, um, yeah, I've, I think it's probably a game that the Broncos would like to, to, to forget. Um, and they'll be better. They'll be definitely better for the run next week. Um, a negative to come out of the game, which is... I think a major negative, obviously, is the, the amount of injuries they sustained uh, at one stage, you know, go, at golden point stage, uh, which is the back end of the game. Only Big Joe was left on the bench. So, you know, how how they cope with their injury toll uh, for next week and you know, whether they're out for a couple of weeks is a concern. Um, you know, that's obviously going to call on some depth, uh, is that depth of quality and will they be able to be as competitive uh, in the coming weeks? Um, or also positive, which I forgot, uh, remiss of me, but you know, Jack Bird's return was really good. Uh, his involvement in the game, his energy in the game was, was really good. Um, you know, that's, that's a major positive for them moving forward. Uh, is only going to get better. Uh, where they play him, I don't know. Now it's a, uh, it's. I think he's going to obviously just fill that centre spot. So um, things could change. Anyway, going to the Tigers, uh, positives. Obviously their defence, and when you look at it, um, in the fact that the Broncos kick kick themselves to a win. Um, uh, the fact that a team like the Broncos couldn't score against them um, and were only able to win by the boot uh, is massive respect uh, for their defensive structure and their ability to defend under pressure. Their scramble defence is excellent. Their, their willingness to, to be there for their teammates uh, and to work for one another is um, you know, as a testament to to Ivan Cleary and obviously the the preseason that they've had 
and the work that they've had put into them um, in their defence and their structure. So, yeah, that's a major positive. Uh, I thought the, the, the game of Russell Packer, um, and please forgive me if I've got this wrong, but I, I didn't think he had a break in the first half. I thought he played the whole first half. Um, I could be wrong, but, you know, monumental effort um, on his behalf. But the most important thing about his his game, what he was noticeably out on his feet uh, at the back end of the game, but some of his scramble efforts on, on faster, more agile players, and he's not, you know, what you call very good laterally, and his speed, um, you know, off the mark over a short distance, but he um, he his defence was outstanding. Um, you know, that's a hats off performance to him. Um, his, his front row partner in Ben Madalena had a really good game. Um, Luke Brooks had a, a better game. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. As much as a fan, I am a Luke, Luke Brooks, and I think there's, you know, he, he certainly has the potential. He has shown a lot of potential in the time that he's been in in, in the NRL, but. Um, I just want him to keep. I'd like him to have one of those real dom dominating sort of performances, and it's in him. It's definitely in him as a player. Um, and he's got the ability to do it. I just want him to to do that. You know, one one game, and then I think that it just sort of it'd break the seal on him, and then we get to see you know, the wonders of Luke Brooks weeks and weeks and years on. Um, so moving to the negatives for the Tigers, uh, I thought their attack kind of looked uh, more conservative this week, and whether that was obviously, obviously them coming up against the Broncos, um, but I kind of got the feeling that over the first two weeks of the competition, there wasn't a lot of expectation on them to win, and um the fact that they got those results was like the team trying to, you know, hold on to something that was really special. And the way they played on Friday night against the Broncos, although they defended really well and they scrambled really well and they kept themselves in the game, the way they attacked um, was almost like they were playing not to lose. Uh, it was like they didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to, have to give up all the good stuff that they've already achieved in the first two rounds. I don't know if that kind of makes sense to, to a lot of people, but um, they they didn't really offer a, offer a lot as opposed to what they had in the first two rounds. In the first two rounds, there was a lot of offloads um, and there were phases of, of their play that was, um, you know, uh, high energy, um, you know, bodies around the ball and you know, they push on the ball and everything was very energetic. Uh, whereas on Friday night, it was almost like they kind of pulled all that back uh, and only let it go at sort of uh, sort of half the effort. Um, like I said, I don't know if that makes sense to anybody, but that's the kind of feel that I got with the way they attacked on Friday night. Um, and... You know, the negative out of that is that, you know, they scored only one try on the, on, on the night. And it, it's round three, granted. Uh, and, and, you know, everyone at this stage is sort of really clunky and, you know, trying to get their execution right. And that won't happen, like I said, until, you know, round five or six. But in saying that, um, I kind of felt like they went away too far from what they had achieved in the first two rounds. And um, that, to me, is a negative. Um, they're not really kind of backing themselves um, with with their ability and what they'd already have ch what they had already achieved. Um, uh, from from the from a front row forward winning field position or a general team winning field position. Um, they allowed the Broncos uh, to win the f field position battle on the majority of occasions, um, you know, set for set. 
and um, you know that's a little bit of a concern. I, I thought the the forwards of, of the Tigers, although their carries uh, were strong, but they they weren't really bending or you know br- busting the line like the, like the Broncos were doing. Um, when the when the Broncos were you know, you're getting out of their own half and you know, pushing through the middle third, they um, they were obviously gaining more meters you know, through their post contact, and, but even just just their power running. So that's to me was a little bit of a concern. Um, the last thing for me that is is a concern, I guess, um, coming out of a game with a, with a loss. Uh, like Friday night, um, is the psychological effect that it's going to have on the team. Uh, it was a very physical game. Um, like I mentioned, uh, you know, both teams were, were physically out on their feet at the back end. Um, but the way that the Tigers lost, um, you know, with that decision uh, after all that that effort, um, you know, is it going to... Pref- affect their performance um, next week. Uh, I guess a lot of people will say yes. Uh, what we're going to see next week is how strong they are as a team um, psychologically um, and are they going to be able to pick themselves up from a performance like that after losing at the death um, in the way they did to coming out next week and you know possibly getting another two points. So um, this week for the Tigers is, is, a, is a really big week for them um, as, a, as a unit, also as a, as a coaching staff to be able to, 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 to keep the boys up um, after such a disappointment from Friday night. And um, I'm really interested to see how they come out of um, you know, the weekend's loss uh, and then perform next week. So, um, yep, that's all I've got for the Tigers and the Broncos match from Friday night.